Hello, everyone. My name is Brayden, and I am the Senior Manager of Teacher Community for Little Kids Rock. And I want to welcome you to our teacher expert panel on Latin music and modern band. We are so excited to be able to host this conversation with three amazing educators and really hope that you're able to pick up some takeaways that you can bring back to your classroom. Um, just before we begin, I wanted to briefly tell you about a few more events Little Kids Rock has coming up that you might enjoy. First, if you don't know about our virtual jam fest, it's a virtual concert featuring student groups from around the country. Any Little Kids Rock teacher is welcome to submit their group's filmed performance. It can be in, an in-person performance or an edited together remote video performance. And we have tons of resources and even PD sessions to show you how to put those together. Uh, the final videos are due in three weeks if you wanna participate, but the deadline to reserve your spot is this Saturday, May 1st. So if you wanna participate, you can head to jamfest.littlekidsrock.org to see more info and sign up. Uh, next, our 2021 songwriting exhibition recently wrapped up and we received almost 200 student original songs. On May 12th at 6 p.m. Eastern, we'll be hosting a live songwriting exhibition listening party where we'll play excerpts of every single song that we received. And we'll also announce the recipients of all 90 prizes we have to offer. So you can come for inspiration or just to hear a great concert. Um, check that out on May 12th at 6 p.m. YouTube.com slash Little Kids Rock. Tune in live. And finally, if you like today's teacher expert panel on Latin music, you might also enjoy next month's panel on Asian American and Pacific Islanders identity and modern band. Um, that's happening May 19th at 6 p.m. Eastern. And I will drop the sign up link in the chat so you can sign up early for that. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our moderator for today's panel. He is a senior developer of curricular programs for Little Kids Rock. Please welcome Tony Sousa. All right, hello everybody. Very uh, excited to be here with all of you today and uh, very much want to uh, go ahead and, and jump into uh, the, the panel and everything that we're gonna be uh, discussing uh, with it. Uh, but before we actually uh, jump in and introduce uh, our our, uh, our teachers and uh, and have them talk about uh, you know Latin music and and the way that they apply it in the classroom, uh, I did want to acknowledge that the the term Latin music is very much in over generalization of of uh, music that's sung in Spanish uh, or Portuguese and that comes from a Latin American country. Okay, so these countries include uh, Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador. Panama, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, Paraguay, Uruguay, Colombia, Brazil, Peru, Bolivia, Argentina, Chile, Venezuela, Ecuador, Puerto Rico, uh, Cuba, Dominican Republic, French Guiana, Honduras, Spain, Portugal, the U.S., and more. There's still there's definitely uh, other other countries that that uh you know that that could say that they're producers of Latin music. So um, as you can see, a ton of different uh, countries that that uh, that encompass. Uh, Latin music. So, so, uh, so, just wanted to put that out there that when we speak of Latin music, uh, we're we're very much talking in 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 general terms, and and we do want to kind of uh, get to a point where we specify uh, various styles or or musical cultures within uh, Latin music. Okay. So, with that said, I want to focus the majority of our conversation today uh, around the various ways that uh, these different types of music are applied in the classroom, and specifically. Uh, we're going to uh, we're going to focus in on on these three uh, teacher experts. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and introduce each of them right now. So first, I'd like to introduce Ana Rivero, and Ana is a Cuban uh, pianist and choral conductor who resides in Miami, Florida. For the last, she's uh, lived there for the last 17 years. She is the general music teacher and middle school choir at Jane S. Roberts K through eight Center with an experience of more than 20 years as a Latin music performer, as a pianist and singer. She's also been a member of Little Kids Rock for six years, and she holds a master's and a bachelor's degree in music education. So welcome, Ana. Happy to have you here. Thank you. It's a pleasure. All right. Next teacher we have here is Art Fuerte. 
Arturo is the general music teacher at Willard Elementary School in Evanston, Skokie, District 65. This is his fifth year in the district and has previously taught in Chicago Public Schools and the Teton County School District. All right, so I'd like to introduce Art. Hello, Art. All right, and finally, we have Fabian Lopez, who is a teacher at Edward Hurley Elementary School school which is a pre-k through eight school and fabian is a uh, works within chicago public schools and specializes in orchestral strings general music mariachi music and modern band fabian received his bachelor's of music education at vander cook college of music and is currently seeking his master of arts degree in community and teacher leaders from northeastern illinois university in chicago so welcome fabian very happy to, to have you here uh, as well. So uh, let's go ahead and, and jump right in, okay? So we can, uh, uh, we, we, you know, we can, we can talk some, some shop right here. So uh, I'm gonna throw this out and, you know, feel free to, to, uh, to jump in, uh, who, you know, whoever would like to go uh, first. But uh, the question is, what specific Latin genres uh, do you focus on in your program? I can go first, I guess. Cool. Um, um, we specifically teach certain things that we can also um, incorporate movement, right? So um, we do, we have a lesson on cumbia and we teach the dance steps and all the percussion rhythms. We do a cha-cha-cha um, and we show videos of the dancing, especially now, um, you know, with Zoom and all that, we, we kind of have to show a lot more videos, right? And so um, it's easy for us. Um, we, we teach, uh, or I specifically teach salsa, but I use salsa to teach the clave with the, with the understanding that, um, with the understanding that we're gonna learn about its influence on rock and roll, on modern bands, right? So we take the clave and then we do, we do the Bo Diddley rhythm. And then we, you know, we, I want candy and all those songs that have the clave, right? And then we, um, I specifically teach corridos as it relates to the Mexican revolution, um, specifically concentrating on soldaderas, the women warriors of the, of the time. And, um, and then a little bit of plena, just a little bit. <laughs> well, those are the genres we kind of do. Nice, nice. I like that there's like different um, samplings from, you know, from, from different regions, which, which I think is great. Very cool. Uh, Anna, you want to go next? Yes. Um, well, in my classroom, um, I've been um, concentrating uh, the Latin music a little bit more into cha-cha-cha and son cubano, which are the, well, since I'm Cuban, that's my, my forte. Um, but definitely, um, this is, this is a, a field that I want to spend because we have a, a very big and variety community in Miami. So um, my plan is to to actually um, incorporate other music genres representing Venezuela, um, Mexico, um, uh, what else? Um, Co Colombia, Argentina, which are, you know, very main countries that I, I see with a, with a folk music that we can teach to, to the students, but pri primarily recently it's been Cha 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 and Son Cubano. Son Cubano, which is already, it's been challenging because it's not, it's not easy. <laughs> and in elementary, yeah, especially. Def <laughs> yeah. Definitely, definitely. Cool, cool. Very nice. And uh, how about you, Fabian? Sure. For me, um, I uh, my school is predominantly um, in an area that has a large population of uh, Mexican American people, and so my um, genre that I pr primarily focus on is is of the Mexican genre. Uh, looking at mariachi music, um, I am the mariachi teacher at my current school right now. Um, however, um, interesting enough, I, I am not Mexican. I am actually identify as Puerto Rican and Colombian. And so um, I had to learn a lot through the last five, six years of being in this position to, uh, to teach it uh, and to teach the style. And so um, I work with a lot of different artists and different uh, specialists that do actually, you know, they come from Mexico and they work with these um, amazing people that, are, that know the folklore very well. 
Um, the other thing I will say is I, I like to try to, uh, like the other panelists that spoke, is to try and introduce different genres of uh, uh, Spanish music, Latin music. Um, you know, I've tried some um, Latin rock as well to introduce students to that. Um, I know my students are definitely into corridos, like uh, Art was saying as well. They are always begging me to, to add corridos to the programming. I'm still not quite there yet, so maybe Art, you can give me some tips, but um, definitely it's, it's something that I think um, if you can expose students uh, at the beginning to be, to, to understand their culture a little bit better, I think that they end up wanting to know more and wanting to explore different cultures that maybe they didn't you know, thought existed before. So. Right. Right. And I, I think what, what's very powerful about that is, is you're, you're essentially practicing uh, student directed student centered uh, music, you know, like even though it's not necessarily your specialty uh, just the fact that, that you're listening to your students and, and you're hearing them out and, and then uh, bringing in uh, and then also I think, I think bringing in experts, you know, from, from the actual uh, culture, I think is, is, is also very, very important. Uh, I'm Mexican American and, you know, although I, I, I've heard a ton of mariachi music throughout my life, uh, you know, at parties everywhere, I, I, I'm, I'm very not, um, I'm very much not a specialist within, uh, within mariachi, right? So even, even in my classroom, I've brought in uh, uh, people who, who do it uh, regularly, which, which helps a ton. So, uh, so, so that's, that's great. Um, just because uh, the, the the question was brought up, and you know, I, I know uh, the the three of you have kind of mentioned different different uh, uh, genres within within Latin music, but is there is there any uh, kind of like pop focused Latin music that that you've uh, incorporated over the last few years that that uh, you might be able to to uh, speak to? I I did I I actually um, well one one of the the sounds that I, I did with my, my fifth grader was, uh, which I consider a shasha pop, is from Camila Cabello, Havana. So that was actually, I, I can say pretty easy um, to, to teach it to, to the students. It was a success, <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah when when, uh, when Havana first came out, uh, it, it was it was definitely a, a big hit, even amongst uh, Little Kids Rock teachers uh, uh, all over. So that, that's that's definitely a good uh, good example. Uh, Art Fabian, do you have any other? Yeah, I was gonna just add on to what Anna was saying. Of when Havana came out, that was the perfect opportunity to drop some some Latin music and, and teach them. You know, I, what I did is I took Havana and then I went the cha cha route. Okay, we're gonna do this at the cha cha cha, and and this is a cha cha cha. And we learned the song and got them hooked with the song, and then started exploring other things. Once we learned the cha cha rhythms, we were able to do song after song after song, as long as my bass player was not absent, right? Um, but yeah, it's um, I've I've tried a, a song um, by Juanes um, when I was in CPS. We tried a song La Camisa Negra. Um, it did not go well, but we tried it, right? And you will learn from from all the failures. And but it, it was a lot of fun. So yeah, we we do a lot of a lot of pop music too. Um, if you can find a song like Havana and then explore and expand it out, and it's a teaching moment. It's like that's the perfect song right there, you know, to teach all these things. Yeah. I agree. That's great. That's great. Cool. I'll just quickly. Sure. Yeah, sure. I'll just quickly add that, um, like Art, I did a, a song uh, by Juanes as well. Um, I did um, Un Dia Normal from the same album, I believe. Um, and um, it, it went pretty well, <laughs> but it wasn't without, you know, some some things had to be changed about the music. And I know we're going to talk a little bit more about that later. But um, as far as, po I, I definitely agree with Havana. You know, when I remember when Havana came out that, uh, we, we were actually fortunate enough to work with uh, one of our dance partners in Chicago to bring to come in and work with some partners um, that actually taught the dance to taught the cha cha uh, to our students. And so it was really cool to see. I wasn't a part of I like I was an indirect part of it, um, but um, it, it was a, a way for me to then introduce that re back into the regular classroom and talk about it and, and you know, for students to um, be an, encouraged by it or be excited about it. And so that was that was definitely a great opportunity for us as well. Um, anytime that we have a pop artist that comes up that I think is relevant, I try to bring it up in, in our classrooms. 
I think that's great. Yeah, I think I think that's that's excellent. And yeah, and, and I think uh, you know, for everybody that's that's uh, watching and listening right now, I, th I think you're you're already like you're hearing different. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm even seeing it on the chat. Like you're hearing different uh, artist names or different uh, styles of, of music or genres, and you're like, wait a minute, what's what's that? Right, and you kind of start to 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 quickly uh, learn that that the uh, the scope is very wide, and, and there's just a whole bunch of different. Uh, um, elements that that you can that you can uh, you know hold hold on to and 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 present to to your students. So um, and just to because uh, I'm fo I'm following the the chat a, a little bit right here and just to kind of address uh, a, a couple of questions. So cha 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 is a is a, a genre within uh, that that uh, comes from from Cuba. So it's a it's a Cuban uh form form of of uh of of music so it has its own specific uh like uh, uh repertoire right that's very unique to uh that rhythm people always like to you know to, uh do the pattern the cha 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 as kind of like the the rhythmic uh foundation to to that style so um, you know, so so just to kind of uh, put put that out there, and also uh, the artist that's been mentioned a few times is Juanes, which I'll put it uh, here on the on the chat. So Juanes is a Colombian artist. Uh, he's he's uh, basically like a pop uh, artist for the for the most part, although he does uh, you know bring in elements that are that are uh, distinct from uh, that that are very unique to uh, Colombia. So he'll bring in like uh, cumbias, or he'll bring in a vallenato. Um, as well, so and I'll I'll put that term uh, in here uh, as well. So mm -hmm. so uh, so it's pop music, but with with uh, traditional elements, I guess you know, like traditional like Latin uh, elements that that are there. So uh, very very cool. And by the way, for for everybody uh, uh, everybody that's watching and listening, we'll we'll uh, we're gonna have a whole section uh, at the end of our uh, panel today that where we're gonna be able to to really focus in on your questions. So uh, make sure you you uh, you hold on to them and and uh, and we'll. We'll uh, address them in, in in a while, okay? So, um, moving on is uh, for for all of you here. Is Latin music a main focus of your program of your music program, or do you infuse it into like your overall repertoire? And you know, so is is it just kind of like a component that you bring in, or is it is it an actual uh, uh, major focus of of your music program? I can start um, at my school uh, since I am the you know the mariachi teacher at my school. Um, we're we're very lucky in the sense that we can have a specific person to focus on that particular genre of music. Um, we do have another teacher who is a general um, music teacher. However, I also do general music as well, so we share those responsibilities. Um, and so uh, you know, I was hired on the basis of of instilling a, a full fledged mariachi program. Um, from the ground up, it had never been done. Um, it was funded by an outside organ, a non-profit organization, and so, um, you know, I was really challenged in that sense to to make it the focus of the school because uh, it, it, at the beginning it wasn't. You know, it was it, they had they had some experience of having Latin music from like different other other different partners that were coming from outside into the school, but nothing that was really internalized in the school that met the you know, the culture that was at being represented at the school. And so this was really the step forward for us. And now we're in our, this is, I believe, our sixth year in, in the run. Um, and, um, you know, we've seen a trans a transformation in, in, in the way that students uh, take ownership of their culture because of that. And so I would say that, yes, for me, it is a main thing that we do. For my little ones, you know, our program starts in third grade. And so for mariachi specifically, um, every student learns how to play violin in third grade, and then they can choose their own instrument by the, you know, as they go forward. Um, but um, uh, for the little ones, we, I infuse whatever Spanish music that I can, you know, whatever, whatever uh, little tunes I can come up with or change the words to, um, you know, nursery rhymes into Spanish to try and, again, bring those students into the fold and bring them into the culture to be like, no, I, rep I understand your culture, I understand mm -hmm. your language. And I want to incorporate or include you in in this in this process. So for me, it's very important that Latin music, no matter what it is, um, that it's incorporated everywhere in every aspect of music. Nice, nice. Thank you. Cool, uh, Anna. You want to jump in? Yeah. Um, no, for me, it's it's not it's not a main um, 
a main repertoire that I do. I like to do a little bit of everything besides, uh, you know, that we have different shows during the, the school year. We have the, the holiday show. So I, I do um, holiday music there. Uh, a set, set for, for my, my fifth graders, um, which I give them, you know, the, the freedom to, to pick any other, any other music genre can be rock, can be pop. Um, but I tried that is related with the holiday theme. Now at the end of the school year is when we do a uh, different repertoire and it's when I bring the Latin, the Latin genre. So incorporated with all the different, different genres in the show. Yeah. Nice. Nice. How about you, Art? Yeah, mine is, mine is the same. It's incorporated here and there. I do specific lessons, like I was saying, but um, I give my students the ability um, to choose their own song at the end of the year. And since a big portion of my population is Spanish speaking, inevitably they, they, they choose a Spanish song. So it, it's happened almost every year uh, where we'll go to vote on songs and, and two of the three top three songs are in Spanish. And sometimes they don't win out and, and we, you know, we use the democratic process and, but um, if they don't win out, then they don't win out. But most of the time they do. And so that's when, that's when we use it. So it's kind of like dispersed here and there with the lesson here and there, knowing the rhythms. And then once you open that can of worms, uh, usually they end up choosing a Spanish song, but it's not the main focus of, of the program. Got it. Got it. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, very nice. And kind of speaking, um, like re re relating, relating to all of this. So, if, you know, imagine I'm a, uh, you know, I, I want to start a, a Latin music program uh, at my school, right? Uh, what would be some key first steps uh, uh, towards towards making sure that I that I incorporated into my music program uh, properly? And and how might that look across uh, the various grade levels? as well like how, how how might i structure a, a uh, latin music program if i'm if i'm building it from from scratch okay um in my case that i i work uh with elementary kids and and you can see the different the different the differences between grades when especially when when we're teaching the little kids rock program I would say that um, it's a good idea to start with uh, some some history incorporator about the genre. So we teach to the students um, a little bit the context, right? Where, where's the genre coming from? What are the main artists? Uh, some famous uh, songs. So the kids get related with. And then it's when we get into, okay, we're gonna jump in and, and start learning this specific song from this specific genre, and 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 from there, I well, I build a lesson, uh, which is I don't know if you want me to talk about that right now, or, or is it gonna be a, a question I, later on? I, yeah, I, th I, th I think dealing more with, with like those initial steps towards setting up the program, you know, and and, and yeah. being able to to kind of uh, build it up from from there. That's, that's what I do in my case. I, I spend a couple of lessons teaching uh, the students about the genre. Okay, perfect, perfect. And Art, you wanna, you wanna jump in here? Yeah, I think the, the, the easiest way, like we already mentioned it, find a song that the kids love. Somebody mentioned Santana, totally, totally, man. If you, if you do one of his songs, like I always do Oye Como Va, and then I'm like, that's a cha-cha-cha, people. And then here's Tito Puente doing it. And you just, you take something that they know. It's the whole concept of Little Kids Rock. You take the music they know and love and teach them these other different concepts. So if you can find something like that, and then boom, go out. Havana yeah. is a perfect example. Boom, do it, right? And what, what it looks like across the grades for me is, <clears throat> I do, I mentioned cumbia. That's my second grade. Graders do cumbia. And then when they get to third grade, they do cha-cha-cha. So it, the, the rhythm is just a little bit harder and a little bit trickier as you as you progress. And then in third grade, we do the clave. We teach them, um, and someone was asking about the clave. We do teach um, um, the, the son clave, not the rumba, not yet. That's hard, you know, Anna, that's hard. Um, yes. we, we teach the son clave, the three, two, and two, three. 
and we have them practice along with different tracks where they got to try to find it. And then just even during the year, we'll play a song and I'll say, is this a three, two clover or two, three? And, and you know, it could be some rock. It could be like Taylor Swift. You can find a clave in Taylor Swift. You can do it. And then um, in fourth grade, when we start doing more composition stuff, that's when we introduce the fourth and fifth grade, we do the corridos because of, um, because um, we're doing a little bit more composition and you know, we actually make our kids write corridos and they don't necessarily have to be in Spanish. There's a lot of good translated corridos that you can do. And so that kind of what it, kind of what it looks like in our program is it's cumbia, cha-cha-cha, clave, corridos. Right. Nice, nice. So yeah, so, you, so you, very cool. So you've essentially just uh, outlined a few different uh, musical styles and cultures that you want to focus on and then pick songs, uh, song examples from each one, right, mm -hmm. to, to kind of demonstrate that. I think that's great. Um, and even with, with you, Anna, with, with uh, you know, building that prior knowledge of, of uh, yeah. you know, of familiarizing them with, with, uh, with uh, different artists, different songs, uh, different uh, characteristics of of, uh, of whatever style you're, you're introducing, I think, I think is yeah. great. Um, Which it, um, actually, um, about what Art uh, mentioned, um, picking the song that the kids like, um, I taught a lesson about salsa uh, to my students this year. And, uh, and, and that was really important. It was a really important element, picking that song that they are familiar with. So they, they related with, hey, See, uh, I don't know, mi vida, that's Mark Anthony, right? So um, they learn and it start relating. Uh, that that specific lesson, salsa lesson, was um, not only it was it was very wide because I covered salsa from different decades and the different type of salsa because right. it's a very wide um, genre. <laughs> And that's what definitely. I wanted my, my students to learn. Yes, Def definitely. Um, and and just to kind of uh, for for uh, those of you that are that are listening and you're like, what's what's clave? Uh, so so clave is it's two things, right? It's it's uh, it's an instrument, right? So it's two wood wooden sticks that are played together, but it's also uh, a, a rhythm, right? A, a very specific uh, a rhythm that is uh, two measures long. And it could be flipped. So when Art mentions that it's either in two three or three two, uh, it's a specific type of of, of rhythm that that uh, serves as like the backbone of the music of 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 where everything gets built. Uh, and it's definitely uh, it, it's it's uh, it definitely comes uh, from from uh, from Cuba, right? Like the clave is is. Uh, uh, the roots of it uh, are definitely in, in, in Cuba. And yeah, for sure, Dave. Uh, so the clave rhythm just goes. That's it. OK, it's very simple, but it's genius in the sense that everything else, uh, like literally like the horn lines, the the the, the vocal lines, the, the piano part, like everything revolves around this rhythm and whatever direction it's in, whether it's in two, three or three, two. Um, and primarily, like when we're talking about like commercial music, like where uh, the clave uh, applies uh, specifically to salsa music uh, or Cuban son, mambo, uh, th things like that. OK, so um, that's kind of where, where we're at um, with with uh, clave. Uh, moving so so kind of similar to you know as far as asking you about about uh, d the first steps towards incorporating Latin music into your program, uh, what about like so so uh, imagine that I, I I'd like to have my students play Latin music, however I have limited knowledge about the various cultures genres artists and other important aspects that create these unique sounds, so how can I as the teacher present some of these elements to my students in a way that avoids me culturally appropriating Latin music, right? So how, how can I, if, if I have very limited knowledge personally of Latin music, but I want to, um, you know, present it to my students, how can I, how can I do it uh, in a way that essentially is uh, respectful, uh, you know, uh, towards, towards uh, that, that, uh, that specific uh, culture and, and music? I can start with that because uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, not being a person who lives and breathes mariachi music right away that was that that was definitely tough you know that was a challenge uh when i first got to my school um and so you know kind of hitting on the points that that 
uh, Art and Anna also mentioned earlier, I think I think part of the first step that you need to do, especially when you're thrown into a, a situation that's completely foreign to you, is to get to know what the students know. You know, like what what music do they know? What what uh, who do they listen to? Like what mariachi artists do they know? You know, and so that I was gathering that that data from them, you know, or the, that knowledge from them, to, and then going back, <laughs> going home at night, you know, going to YouTube. Uh, trying to look for books or, or look for whatever resources that I could. And, and mind you, this was before that the program got, its, got, start, got started really going, you know, um, and, and I didn't have any partners and I didn't have money, you know, I didn't have a lot of resources to, to work with. So, you know, I think part of it is you also have to do some research yourself as well into it. You have to, and let me put it this way, because a lot of times teachers shy away from this because they feel like, well, it's more work on my on my on my current load that I already have, right? But the same token, it's like if you are passionate about trying to, like you said, to bring this to students, and you and you want them to be passionate about, it, then you have to be passionate about it as well, and you have to want it as badly as they do, right? In order to understand it, and so um, I think it's super important to do re do your research. You know, go to colleagues that might, you know, know something about it or maybe find people that can refer you to other people that can help you with this because, uh, you know, starting a program that you may not be familiar with or, or a genre that you might not be familiar can be scary. It can be daunting. Um, and, and that's not uncommon among, among teachers, I don't think. And so uh, it, it's to say that you'll be okay, you know, and to, and to you know, talk to people, talk to resources, talk to kids, talk to other adults in their building to find out what is it that they've done so far, you know? Definitely. Yeah. E excellent suggestions. And, and I think, uh, you know, the, the part of, of, uh, of tapping the students knowledge uh, for this, like in, in many ways, that's, that's in that's not very different than what we already do uh, with modern band in general, right? Is is uh, I know oftentimes we don't necessarily know uh, what students are listening to unless we we uh, directly ask them, and and then we have to go learn about those artists. So um, I think I think that's a great great uh, approach. Uh, Anna, you want to go next? Um, well, I think uh, that was a great advice. <laughs> yes, and I agree. <laughs> um, well, my, my situation is, is is different because um, but but I I definitely um, there's like a couple of um, of websites that I that I, I use um, and I think that any teacher can go there um, and find out especially when when they don't have the knowledge from the Latin music um, the Smithsonian uh, website they have a lot a lot of information there. Um, also, uh, through the Teachers Pay Teachers, they have a lot of resources uh, for projects and, and, and history contexts um, that they can find uh, uh, information there. And there's actually another one that I, 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 I started using this year, and I, and I think it's great. They have great videos. Um, it's called the Music Workshop, Music Workshop, and, and they have uh, great videos uh, through the Latin music. Um, they actually have questions about the video that you can share either online or you can make copies for, for, the, for the students. I obviously, I use these resources. I, I, I rearrange it in a different way for my lessons. I prepare a Google, Google presentation uh, for the students to make it a lot of more interactive. Um, but I think that that would be a good start. And plus, what Fabian uh, chair definitely yes yeah definitely that that's great I'm I'm uh, I'm uh, uh, grabbing the 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 link right now for for uh, the Smithsonian website which I think mm -hmm. is an excellent uh, source not only for Latin music but just but also from from music from yeah. other parts of the world mm -hmm. um, it's also very helpful uh, Art you want to add anything else to yeah I'll to this question add, I'll add one more thing I, I think. Um, you already have three quarters of the ability to do this already. You know all the modern band instruments. In a lot of these groups, like let's just take salsa for example, um, you you have um, you have all the instruments: the, the piano, you have the bass, you got some drums. You're gonna have need auxiliary percussion. So where do you go and learn those two bar patterns? Because the bass pattern is specific to a mambo. It's different for a cha cha. It's different mm -hmm. for a cumbia, right? 
So where do you find that? Where do you find the patterns for salsa? Where do you find, you know, all that stuff? There's a great book called The Salsa Guidebook by Rebecca Malion that has all those styles. And every, almost every single style is a two bar pattern. So all you have to do is just, if you're gonna focus on a certain song and you know what type of song it is, you can go in that book and learn those rhythms. And what we've done in our district is we've, breaking, we've broken down those rhythms into body percussion. So everybody mm -hmm. plays everything all the time. We have three different um, rhythm, rhythmic patterns that are gonna go with the cumbia. And then we, we practice them with body percussion. Then we hand yep. out the instruments, right? But you start with, it, like for a teacher, get that book. It's called um, Salsa Guidebook by Rebecca Malion. And also with that, you should order 101 Montunos just for your edification, right? Like. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I would start with something like that. And, and where did I, where did I learn that? Exactly what Fabian said. I asked a friend, you know, yep. I asked a friend and, and, and that's how it got started. And, and you just, you keep building your knowledge and, and, and I think it's easier than you think. You, you just need those two bar pattern for those auxiliary percussion and the bass, and then you got it. Yep. It's, it's going to be easier than you think. So give it a shot. Don't be scared. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. And, and I think uh, I, I agree, like, you know, be, beyond the student, I think the students themselves are a great resource, uh, but but definitely like just looking, looking uh, out towards your community, uh, you know, putting some some ass, maybe uh, if you're big on Facebook, maybe put it, you know, putting some some ass out there to your friends uh, via Facebook and, and, and uh, start to essentially, um, you know, build your your network of of, uh, of experts in Latin music that you, that you could uh, tap for for questions for resources uh, and even possibly bring them into your classroom to to speak as, as a guest so um, uh, that that's a, a great great resource and and just to just to kind of frame uh, art's suggestion about the salsa guidebook which uh, I put the a link uh, for the book in there that's specifically for salsa music like if you want to you know focus on salsa music uh, salsa related music like cha 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 um, they have, I think, guajiras uh, in there as well, um, but it's all within within that that scope. So if you want to kind of get some uh, information for each of the instruments uh, with within that, it's it's definitely a, a great a great resource specifically for that that type of music. So uh, just wanted to to uh, add that in there. Um, very cool. And uh, Anna kind of uh, uh, took my, my my next question. Uh, already, but but I, I want to ask it uh, regardless, just in case there are other things out there. So, uh, what are what are some some like go to resources besides the ones that you've already uh, brought up? Are there are there any like uh, magazines or podcasts or or movies that that might be helpful uh, either to inform me as the educator uh, more about about uh, Latin music or or also resources that I could directly use uh, with my students. can suggest one one thing um you know the the kennedy center website has a a, a great uh, that's where we got our, our dance videos before tony did did his cumbia <laughs> video that's where i went and they they teach the basic steps of the of the uh, cumbia and, and the cha-cha-cha and all that um which which you know we wanted to do those because they there are they are easy steps that kids can do that's kind of why we picked those genres right but um, that's a great website. And then, like, if you can find the Lomax field recordings, um, I think that's at Library of Congress or one of those. I, I forget um, where um, they he actually recorded corridos early on, and and uh, field hollers. If you're doing all that stuff, um, you know, and that's a that's a great resource. Um, and um, you know, I I always try to um, raid uh, libraries from from. Uh, uh, universities that are close to the border of Latin America. So like if you search University, University of Texas, you're going to find some stuff, mm. All right? Like that's where I found um, some of those uh, information on corridos. Uh, so, you know, just you got to just search, you know, you have the best technology at your hands and it, it, yeah. should, it should be fairly easy to find. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that. Kennedy Center uh, site is is very, very uh uh, very helpful resource, uh, not only not only for for Latin music, but but for other uh, other types of of, uh, of lessons uh, as well. So 
Uh, thank you for sharing that. Um, any other last uh, suggestions as far as resources that, that uh, you might want to contribute? Or are we good right there? Was I right? would okay. say ask a friend. Yes, okay. definitely. All right, cool. <laughs> and I, I did I did see uh, earlier in the chat somebody uh, mentioning that uh, if if uh, if we're going to create a section on on the Little Kids Rock website uh, for for uh, for Latin music, uh, I don't know about a specific section, but we have been creating curriculum and resources uh, focused around around Latin music. So uh, you know, if if you search the song charts, we do have uh, we've released two different uh, Latin song packs. Uh, I think one of them is called uh, um, songs uh, in Espanol and kind of or pop songs in Espanol. And we kind of covered that. Um, and and uh, as Art mentioned, uh, we released a, a cumbia uh, video series uh, a few weeks ago uh, where where uh, where I break down, uh, you know, just the different parts uh, needed for uh, for for playing a, a cumbia a cumbia rhythm. So. Uh, that is there. Very cool. I'm going to go ahead and open it up uh, to questions because uh, we have uh, a little, uh, we have about 12 minutes uh, left in the, in the hour here. So uh, I'm going to read, Dave, if you don't mind, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read your, your question here. Uh, is it your experience that the people who come up learning these styles mostly learn them through reading and standard notation or mostly from an oral tradition uh, slash hands on on way or is it kind of like a, a mix of both? Uh, I can definitely talk about that. Um, when you know, we were when we were beginning to start this mariachi program at our school, um, the answer is no. <laughs> um, they they of many students honestly, it's it's interesting because many of the students that I work with didn't even know what mariachi music was. You know, they they grow they grow up hearing things um, at home, but they don't they're not able to necessarily identify it as that like that's the actual genre that I'm listening to or that's the style of music I'm listening to. And so, you know, um, it was very interesting to have these conversations with students initially when we were developing this program. Um, and so they really didn't have a sense of, you know, any kind of you know musicality part of it don't even talk about the theory or the no, no you know the notation or the instruments you know and so like when i started the program i i had a it was a challenge to for me at least to a introduce all the instruments right and like art said you have all the instruments at your disposal when when you have little kids rock with you as well and so you know and not only are you able to introduce uh, just the stuff from you know the mariachi genre but then you can also expand to say like this is a complement of this right and so i i spent you know probably the first two years i would say just doing that and having students being able to recognize like oh that's a violin you know or oh that's a, a trumpet being played in a mariachi song right or versus a corrido or versus a banda song or something like that and i'm still still doing a lot of that today where it's a lot of, uh, especially for my younger students, a lot of oral learning. Um, and then I'm saying, okay, now let's take it to the next level. Now we're going to start doing the notation. We're going to start talking about notes and quarter notes and eighth notes. And this is the rhythm that you typically see in mariachi music. This is the typical tag that you'll see in mariachi music. And so, you know, you start slow, I would say, and then you start building your base. You know, you start building up from the ground up and again, assessing from what, what students know already or what they don't know, you know? And so perhaps then you gotta do even more research or get more friends to help you in that, in that respect because then, then you really need examples, right? You need people from your community or you need people from outside to come to you and be like, this is what mariachi music sounds like. This is what salsa sounds like. This is what banda sounds like in a real life setting because then the students associate it with, oh, I heard that at home. Oh, I heard that, uh, you know, at my deal's house or, or my uncle's house, right? And so I think that's how you get started with that. And then you just continue to build on, on those experiences. Definitely, definitely. And, and yeah, and, and just to kind of cap that off, um, there, you know, like, I, I think there's many, many different uh, musical cultures and styles of music within Latin music, where it's exclusively an oral tradition, right? And, and that's where it exists, Absolutely. Uh, like, like corridos and th things like that. Uh, mariachi uh, was one of those uh, styles of music that, that worked in that way. And, you know, we, we could have, we could literally have an entire panel series 
uh, focusing on on this specific issue. Um, but I do want to acknowledge that one of the reasons why mariachi music has has gained a lot of steam in uh, in the U.S. educational system is because it got formalized, because it started right. to become uh, notated, and and now a lot of the instruction happens from that approach, right? Which is essentially like a Western European uh, traditional uh, approach versus, you know, versus the, the way that most mariachis uh, generally uh, developed. So uh, so just to kind of put it out there and, and, and we can, you know, like I said, like that's a whole conversation in terms of uh, how you want to kind of focus that uh, that approach uh, pedagogically, but but um, you know, but but uh, definitely something to 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 look into uh, on your own uh, as well. All right, I have a question from uh, Janice who says major artists that kids can relate to for these styles. Yeah, that, that was uh, that was going to be one of the questions that we had on the list as well. So um, what are so what are some some potential artists? Maybe specifically, I think Janice is asking within the the salsa. Uh, salsa genre so if, are any any go-to's as far as uh who they should be listening to the first one is the queen doña celia cruz as the first one it, and it's a start from there <laughs> and 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 then there, we have a lot a lot and and as i said um the salsa genre specifically has a lot of artists because it depends on what kind of salsa you want to teach or perform so i would say um let's say from the top of my head uh from puerto rico gilberto santa rosa um oscar de leon from venezuela mm, grupo nietzsche from colombia um los bam bam uh from cuba Definitely. Yeah, um, there's a lot, a lot. Yeah, there's a, there's a bunch. I, w I would literally just recommend like uh, Google salsa artists, and then all of a sudden you get like uh, a whole bunch of uh, different uh, icons, you know, that that pop up, and and you can yes. just kind of click your way uh, through through each of them and, and and learn more about that. But but yeah, there 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 are a ton out and there. Mark and Mark Anthony, obviously. <laughs> right. <laughs> <I'm> Mark Anthony. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, and and I think you know speaking to that I think um, uh, Mark Anthony is is one of those examples of, of somebody that that has kind of bridged salsa music with popular music yeah. right with just just uh, pop in, in, in general um, along with Camila Cabello and and, mm -hmm. and a few others but but Mark's been doing it for for decades yeah um, literally so that's a good one thank you Braden for finding all stars that's definitely a, a good one a good uh, legendary group to uh, to focus on from from New York. Uh, so, so that one's uh, really good uh, as well. Very cool. We might have time for like one more question. If anybody has has a uh, one last thing to that they want to uh, bring up to the panel. Um, well, I, I wanted to add to the question before um, that uh, through the process of teaching the, the music. Um, in, in my case, since I, I have the elementary kids, I, I do a lot of what Art said um, about teaching the rhythm first. I do like different combinations. I, I teach it by, by road. Um, I like to use like keywords from the, from the song, spe especially because it's in Spanish, and, and teach the rhythm using those words. So we use a body percussion and then start combining the kids. Okay, you're gonna keep the steady beat. And so you're gonna do this specific rhythm, let's say la clave rhythm, or um, let's say uh, the bass rhythm, or maybe a, a little very simple tumbao piano um, with, with one student keeping the steady beat and then I switch them. So when, when we have like a, a lot of practice and, on there is when we take it from from the real instruments because it everything needs to start from interiorizing the the rhythm feeling it so right. that's kind of a, the process that i use in in my in my classroom definitely thank you that's very helpful and i'm, I'm going to squeeze in one last question uh, we have here from jay who says have you posted any of your students performing latin songs i would love to hear your programs so any any Not videos posted. that we, we can check out? 
I have a video, but <laughs> I haven't posted it. I, I show it to the presentation I did um, two years ago at Little Construct at the summit, 2019. I, I, I had a video there, but not on the social media. I would love to share it, but we'll have to find the best way. <laughs> Definitely. There's a snippet of, of one of my classes doing Havana and another one doing um, Bitty Bitty Bomb Bomb on, on the Little Kids Rock. I think I posted it on Little Kids Rock, the private group. Um, but I can't remember. I can't even remember what I ate this morning. So. <laughs> yeah, no. Definitely, especially on a Thursday. I uploaded right? it to the Little Kids Rock website. Yeah. website. Okay, cool. And yeah, in any, uh, are, do, it, do, either, do any of you have YouTube channels by any chance? Yes, I do. I do. If you if you wouldn't mind uh, maybe uh, plugging sure, your, I can drop it in there. Your your channel, I'm sure I'm sure uh, some people would love to to check out uh, any any videos that that you have up there. And uh, of course, you know to to everybody, uh, you know we're, we're uh, again we're we're going to be putting out more curriculum focusing uh, on on Latin music as well as other types of music uh, as well, but. Uh, we, we do want to put out uh, more resources like song charts, uh, like instructional videos that focus uh, specifically on how you build uh, build up a, a, a particular uh, a, a particular rhythm, uh, Latin rhythm or or, or, uh, or specific type of, of pattern. So uh, so be on the lookout for that stuff. It will be it will be uh, coming out gradually over uh, the next few months. And we, we are pretty much running out of time here. So I want to just give a big, big thank you uh, to our three panelists here. If we can give them a virtual uh, round of applause right here. Drop some ones on the chat if you'd like. But, uh, but thank you very much for, uh, uh, honestly, uh, Art, Anna, and Fabian, thank you so much for uh, contributing your, uh, your ideas, your suggestions. Uh, I think it, it was uh, very insightful. And uh, for everybody uh, here, uh, I believe you will be able to access this video afterwards. If you kind of, you know, if you missed some things or you felt it was going uh, a little too fast, feel free to uh, to go back and and uh, and view it. And thank you to all of you uh, for for being here as well and 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 uh, and taking the time to to uh, inform yourselves ab about uh, about how you can incorporate Latin music. I think uh, it you know it only seeks to uh, it only helps to. To uh, build you up as an educator, and especially, uh, you know, it helps to provide uh, more access for uh, for your students. So, um, thank you very much. And as far as the video, Harold, you, you should be able to find it uh, on uh, on Facebook on our Little Kids Rock Teachers Group. So, uh, just be on the on the lookout for it uh, that way. And I'm sure we'll also be attaching it to uh, to our regular emails that that go out as well. So, thank you all very much for being here. Our wonderful panelists, y'all are amazing. Have a uh, wonderful rest of your evening, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.